Will Halo Infinite's 10 year plan be successful? What's the DLC gonna be looking like? When are we gonna get the multiplayer reveal? And could Halo Infinite possibly be game of the year? We'll stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again, giving you another video. And today we're doing another video where we're answering questions from the community about Halo Infinite. If you wanna keep up to date with everything going on with Halo, make sure you tap subscribe to keep yourself up to date as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite. And if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you wanna see some more content. So let's get right into this. As I do so often, I like to go to my community page and ask you guys questions you would like to know about Halo in general, mostly focusing on Halo Infinite. And boy, do you guys get a good response. Definitely been grabbing back more content from that post to try to get all the stuff that I think would cause a good uh, discussion. So if you guys wanna know next time a community post goes live, you just have to subscribe to the channel and interact with the content. So let's get right into the questions here. First question here is on Perception. Do you think Microsoft's 10 year plan for Halo Infinite will be successful? I think using Halo Infinite as a platform is the right move for Halo. Uh, There's always been something that's been kind of an issue with Halo because I feel like the gameplay loop for Halo peaked at Halo 3. The problem is though, you can't really just release like a new game with just like new maps and some minor tweaks and performance changes to Halo to call it a new game to charge people $60. I think that's the biggest issue that Halo has been running into over the past like 10 years essentially, really ever since Halo Reach's launch. Because imagine this of like if Halo Reach was end up being more like Halo 3, but just like maybe the battle rifle hit a little better. Um, maybe there's some new maps, a new campaign, stuff like that, and people charge 60 bucks, but essentially the multiplayer is Halo 3 for the most part. A lot of people would be upset, be like, why would you charge me this much money for just basically DLC? And so Bungie and 343 had to justify these new games by adding in some new game-changing mechanics to make it go like, this is a brand new game, we're not trying to rehash ideas. And so this is why like moving on with a live service platform 10 year plan kind of idea is perfect for Halo. Obviously, a lot of things can change in 10 years when it comes to a game in general, especially Halo as we've seen for the last 10 years. I think when you hear 10 year plan, everyone always thinks of Destiny and that game certainly changed a lot in just the time from 2014 when it released to 20 when the game kind of became its own thing. Though I do feel that the 10 year plan can be successful as Microsoft is the publisher. They got a lot of money behind Microsoft. They can make Halo work pretty much through funding. I think a lot of times, of course, 343 needs to capitalize on success and move the game forward to how people want it to be. But what I expect for the 10 year plan is to kind of be more like more Halo to give into us players. Uh, for a cadence when it comes to DLC, well, we'll have to get into the next question here. Turtle. What possible DLCs can we see coming post launch? Keep up the good videos. What I would expect for DLC is probably like seasonal release drops, which we do know are gonna be happening with Halo Infinite. That was confirmed back in the December updates. Uh, so definitely every three months get a new content drop, probably the new maps, new weapons, new modes, things like that to try out. You know, new marketplace things, which I'm sure are gonna be part of it, the whole thing as well. Uh, but I think for the larger arc of things, I think either every one year, get a big DLC drop and maybe some like new content, new kind of campaign possibly, new maps or especially, or every two years, I would suspect to get like a brand new campaign. It's like a, you know, probably about three to five hours long, something like that. I wouldn't expect campaigns to be crazy long. It all kind of just depends on 343's capability to you know, pump out content. Uh, we do know that Slip Space Engine has been worked to the ground and rebuilt to be able to produce content at a much faster rate, as that's what the current demand is now for live service games, which would make sense. So we could see like yearly content drops of new campaign stuff. If that case, I would suspect like a two or three hour kind of short kind of campaign to kind of progress the story forward. It was every two years, probably like every you know, five, six hour long campaign. You can totally see that happening. And 343 has definitely bloomed in the amount of people who are working on Halo Infinite. So uh, there's a lot of different possibilities and different ways they can go about this. And I'm sure we'll know more as we move closer to the release date of Halo Infinite. Super Didact asked the question, multiplayer reveal when? I would expect to see 
a big presentation of Halo Infinite in June. So I do feel like they still put a big emphasis on the campaign, as that's the much more casual audience would play campaign. I actually recently asked on the community page here, I did a poll asking, what's the first thing you're going to do with Halo Infinite releases? Are you going to do Forge, Multiplayer, or Campaign? And 87% of you out of 5,000 votes said Campaign first. That would make a lot of sense as obviously there were spoilers involved with the campaign. Campaign just generally provides a lot of context for when it comes to how you're playing. So a lot of people are focusing on that. So I would expect to see the probably June reveal of Halo Infinite be focusing on the campaign where they improved from the previous announcement or gameplay demo that we had, but also mention multiplayer. And then think they'll probably showcase the big new mode that's coming with it. Current rumor is a big team battle 2.0 with possibly like 60 plus players or whatever in the match. And that's all rumors from Clobro, which are rather credible leaks, but obviously still leaks. Essentially just kind of showcase off what the flashy stuff is, but I definitely would think we'll know something by June. If we don't see anything in the presentation, uh, we'll definitely know something with the corresponding blog update that's going to happen along with the big gameplay reveal that's going to happen during the summer months. Ezro asks, how do you think having the multiplayer free to play will impact the community. Well, I think initially there's gonna be an absolutely huge boom of people jumping in on wanting to play this because Halo Infinite is gonna be the most accessible Halo game that's ever been released. I mean, we're gonna have it on Xbox Series X, we're gonna have it on Xbox One, yes we are, <laughs> we're having it on PC, which is gonna be on the Windows Store and on Steam as well. And the multiplayer is completely free to play. And you know, there's gonna be a lot of buzz and a lot of anticipation with this game. We're gonna have a lot of big name streamers playing Halo Infinite's multiplayer you know, within that first week. And so there's gonna be a lot of people playing this. It's gonna be kind of probably feeling a little different and when the Halo Infinite releases to be feeling like, wow, we're going to be at the popular table for at the lunch table for a few weeks, which is going to be kind of feeling kind of weird for the uh, Halo franchise. But, you know, a lot of people are really looking forward to this Halo game beyond just the community itself, but people outside of the community as well and gaming media in general. And Halo Infinite is one of the most anticipated games out there. So they definitely are looking forward to playing this. But that's actually a very interesting question with a huge influx of players. How many of those are going to actually stick around three, six, nine, one year, two years after the release and keep playing the game? Is it going to be the core Halo fan base? Is the game going to be so different that it's going to maybe, you know, push off some players or currently within the Halo community right now? Or, you know, that's kind of what happened with Halo 5. Things might be very different and we might be kind of uncomfortable with that at first. Or things could be very familiar and just seeing so many more people enjoying what we enjoy right now would be just, you know, super, make me super happy at least. Knowing that more people are going to experience one of the best multiplayer shooters ever created. I think the big thing is going to be the gameplay itself of Halo Infinite. How is it going to maintain players? How is it going to bring players in? And who are those kind of players? Well, we're going to have to wait and see. Brenton Barnes asks, do you reckon they'll have the veto option? I miss that. The veto option is going to be very interesting to see if we see that return. Uh, we, the reason why we don't really see that with MCC right now is mainly because the way the match composer is kind of set up with all the different modes and different games and stuff like that. Uh, when it comes down to just like your specific map, I think it's just kind of like, come on, man, you just play through it. Uh, it's also going to be kind of interesting to see if they do bring it back because we haven't had a map vetoing since like the initial launch of MCC and then they removed that because of the way the matchmaking works now in MCC. Personally, I don't think it's going to come back as I think the system they've had for MCC right now and in Halo 5 is all right. I just really hope that they have a nice rotation of maps when it comes in, like they have a good variety and make sure they're weighted evenly so then or in some kind of capacity so you don't play like the same map three times over or something like that. I do suspect to have a similar kind of match composer in Halo Infinite that we have right now for the MCC or like what you've seen like maybe in Call of Duty Cold War or Modern Warfare where you kind of select the modes that you want to play and then you hit go. And if that's going to be the case for the match composer, I would not expect to see that veto system coming to Halo Infinite. Because you also have the issue when it comes to people just quitting out of the game because they didn't get the map that they wanted. And it's really annoying when that happens. It happens far too often. I see it way less now because of the way the match is composer is set up right now for MCC. So as long as the community knows like, hey, we're seeing this map too much or I don't like this map, make it less in a rotation. Let it be known. Have your voice be heard. 343 is listening. They will adjust and we'll get to a sweet spot when it comes to the map rotations eventually with Halo Infinite. Luke asks, do you think Halo Infinite could be game of the year? Now, does Halo Infinite have the potential to be game of the year? 
Absolutely. Uh, though it's got some very stiff competition. I did decide to do some research to kind of look into exactly uh, what games are expected to be releasing in 2021. And oh my God, I did not realize how stiff the competition is going to be. Uh, you have Elden Ring, which is like a dark fantasy role playing game that's developed and written with uh, George R.R. R. Martin, the guy who wrote Game of Thrones uh, from their initial books, at least. And so that's really going to be tough right there. You got Far Cry 6. You have God of War Ragnarok, which won, I think, Game of the Year when it came out for the reboot of God of War. I uh, was at 4, right? Or just God of War, I think it was called. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West, the you know the sequel to Horizon Dawn. Uh, the rumor of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2, the rumor of 2021 release date there. And of course you have COD 2021, and now confirmed that Battlefield 6 or whatever Battlefield game is releasing at the end of this year as well. So just in shooters alone, super stiff competition. That's why it's such a hit to the Halo community that we did not hit this release date because there wasn't really like a must play game with these new consoles releasing. A lot of people were saying, where are the games with these new consoles? And they kind of came out without really having games ready for them, but it just could be because of the pandemic why they weren't able to line things up properly. But you can see that like this competition is gonna be super stiff. And also I've kind of noticed that a lot of times with these game of the years, uh, they definitely do favor a lot more on story-based games as uh, those games tend to have much more of a impact on society and gaming community in general. I mean, think of all the amazing games that released in 2020 and which game won 2020's game of the year? The Last of Us 2 actually. And that's because it's such a story focused game. It's such an interesting story uh, for better or for worse for most people, but hey, it won that award. And you can see that like, maybe it's not the most popular game or game that most people play, but the thing is that the game itself is very story driven and it had a significant impact in the gaming community as a whole for that release. But best, I would maybe expect to see Halo Infinite as a mention as or nominated for game of the year. But the, looking at this competition, especially with like Far Cry 6, if they hit the mark on that one, if God of War Ragnarok hits its mark on that one too, or even Horizon Forbidden West as well, uh, that's some pretty tough competition. Though I don't think that we need to win Game of the Year for Halo Infinite to be recognized as an amazing game. Especially since the storytelling type of Halo doesn't really lend itself to be like so heavy enough to where it can be Game of the Year because it's much more action based. Uh, obviously there is very well told stories like Halo 2 and 3 and even 4 as well, very well told stories. Uh, though the thing that they're kind of shorter campaigns and that they definitely put much more emphasis on action and doesn't really put a whole lot of emphasis on drama. Drama games generally tend to be more nominated for that kind of stuff. I mean, we see this with like movies as well, where like the movie The Dark Knight, I don't believe was even nominated for a movie of the year, but that year of movies when The Dark Knight released, everyone recognized Dark Knight as like the best movie that came out that year, even though it wasn't even nominated because it's a superhero movie. So does it have potential to win? Yes. Do I think it will win? Probably not, but I think it could have possibly be this be mentioned. If you guys want to see more of these Q&A videos, make sure to tap that like button, leave a comment down below what you liked about this video. And if you want to keep up to date with everything going on with Halo and been out of the loop for the last few days or so, check out the videos on the screen right here. Got a link to all my news and informational videos right there. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.